So would you say that uh, the concept of fitness by Greg Glassman, would you believe that it's not accurate, like the uh, work across broad time and modal domains? Um, I think that I, I think there's some I think there's some real genius in uh, in his original thoughts. Um, the problem is is how you get there. Like is is kind of different. Uh, I think the the definition of CrossFit is extremely self serving. The ability to you know increase work capacity over broad time modal domains, uh, functional movements performed at high intensity. You know what does intensity mean? The way I understand intensity is per percentage of one RM. So like if, if you squat 500 pounds, 80% is your intensity for the day. So the way that they look at it is intensity is kind of an emotional response. You know, how hard did you work? Did you go, you know, increase work capacity? Are you going harder each day? And the problem is, is that there's, um, you know, there should be some inherent periodization in there where like not every day you fucking burn it down. So in the NFL, you, you know, there would be, uh, you know, like a Wednesday would be a hard training day. Thursday would be a little easier. Friday would be a little easier. Take off Saturday, and then you go max intensity on Sunday. So there had to be a little bit of ebb and flow. The problem is you have people that are just setting themselves on fire each day with the workout, trying to you know chase this idea of fitness. And I think the problem is is when you get too far over, all of a sudden you become unhealthy, and it becomes you know some bigger issues. So I think there was some original genius in it, but I think if he had just put the structure in earlier and been like, here's the deal. Um, and actually the way CrossFit was first explained and when I read the original information, it actually made sense like, uh, master movement, right? So learn to lift weights, you know, be proficient Olympic weightlifting, you know, train the gymnastics movements, you know, do some conditioning. And there was this whole thing on skill development. Like, um, if you took it like a little bit more like uh, gymnastics is a great example, right? You have to be able to complete certain movements to be able to progress. Like, Hey, like, and I, I watch my daughters at gymnastics. If they master one move, then they get to the next move and it kind of unlocks as they go. And um, I think what happens with CrossFit, it's like going into, you know, gymnastics today and the person day one's like, what are we doing? Oh, we're working on the high bar. Really? Okay. Or, Hey, we're, uh, we're on the tumbling track and we got to do, you know, three consecutive backflips. So I, I think what happens is they just throw people in and a lot of times they're not building the foundation that they needed earlier on. And the smart gyms have, they've taught people like, Hey, we're taking a kind of a cross of football approach. We're going to do some kind of, sh you know, short kind of mixed modal conditioning, but we're going to stack it with a lot of solid strength work. And we're going to make sure that our people are strong and stable can do, you know, strict pull-ups. Like I got a, for example, I got a video the other day from a lady who um, hit me on Instagram. It's like, hey, I'm having this terrible up breaking in my upper back when I'm coming out of the hole in the squat. And she sent me the video. Sure enough, as she came up, you can see her back start to break. She's like, uh, you know, how do I fix this? My first question is, how many pull-ups do you have? Zero pull-ups. Okay. Uh, your back will break until you get strict pull-ups. Everybody that I've seen this upper back breaks, we end up doing a bunch of uh, H pulls or a, a ver vertical pulls, sorry. And as they get vertical pulls, all of a sudden now their upper back doesn't break. So the reason we use the pull-up is to create a nice, strong, stable foundation for you to place a bar. So um, she's like, what should I do? And I'm like, you can continue to squat and run into this, or you can put time into the accessory work to make sure that your upper back is strong. So um, I, I think teaching people... Uh, at the level one, if, if this, then that, like here are the faults, this is what you're going to encounter. This is the best practices. This is how, how you should lay out. Like when the people come train with you, these are the benchmarks that they need to hit before they can progress. Like I need 10 strict pull-ups before you learn to kip. I need you to be able to, you know, deadlift and do all these other movements before I progress you into something else. And I think if they had put those different steps and locks in kind of similar in gymnastics, very similar in martial arts, I think they would have done a lot better. Mm -hmm. Um, the one thing which kind of blows me away is when I, uh, when I started in, in martial arts, this was probably like 1982, I think we had like four belts. So there was a white belt. I want to say there was like a green, an orange belt, a green belt, a brown belt, and then it was black. So like, and I remember I was like a white belt for like almost two years. And then I finally got my first belt and I remember like, like the process for belts were like, you know, now I, I like when I, you know, click on Instagram and I see people doing jujitsu or martial arts, there's like 15 different colors of belts. There's stripes on the belts. They got tape on the belts. I mean, <laughs> yeah. so they've really put all these like, kind of like, uh, this is how far you are a lot more incremental. I mean, I, I remember literally I had a white belt for like two years and then finally they were like, Hey, you're going to test on this Saturday for another belt. And I was like, okay. And we showed up and we had to do like, I think we had like three katas we had to do. And then we had to do some like some basic, like kind of sparring type stuff. And then I got my next belt and then it was like, 
oh, cool. When do I get another belt? And they're like, when you're ready. And, I, uh, and then I think I trained there for like another year. And then they were like, hey, you're ready for a next belt. So like, like simpler it, times. Like this whole, well, but um, so but good I times. went. Um, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Like I, I took my kids uh, like I was looking for some hot keto around here. And there was a couple of Korean martial arts. And you know, so I, I went in and uh, just said, hey, can I come in and watch? I got some kids that I want to get into martial arts. I took martial arts. I just want to come watch how you run this stuff. And we went into this one place. And, like, for their kids' classes, like, all their black belts were, like, 8, 9, and 10 years old. Wow. Oh, oh and uh, that, so I that, asked the lady. I'm that like, speaks volumes. I, I, well, like, I, I was like, how, how are these 8-year-olds? Well, they've been here for, they've been training four years. They earned their black belts. And I was like, I was like, dude, there's no way the compulsory and the things that we were required to do in terms of, like, so the old school, like, our floor at the, when I did uh, Shotokan, it was hardwood. And you had to kneel on the hardwood to the point where, like, you know, the shin hop that we teach in, you know, that we use in one of our plyometric movements was how you were had to get up off the ground was basically do a shin hop. And, like, you know, you go in, everything's padded. And I'm, like, watching the, the kids. And they were, like, hey, like, what time's the kids class? And so a couple kids kind of trickle in. A few come in late. All of a sudden, there's, like, four black belts. There's, like, an 8, a 10, an 11-year-old uh, black belts. And I'm, like, I asked the lady, I'm, like, how, uh, what's the rate? Well, they started training at four and they were black belt by eight. And I was like, we're fucking out of here. So we left. The lady called me and she was like, well, what'd you think? I'm like, um, one, you had four kids, not to say that a kid can't be a black belt, but I'm like, that's, uh, like, that's not what I'm looking for. I mean, I'm not looking for people that just pay the money and get their belts. And then the other problem too, was that the adult black belts were severely out of shape. Like they were all really heavy and out of shape. And I was like, I was like, dude, the old man that trained that, that I learned from, that dude was like beef jerky. That dude was a, like in phenomenal shape in his 60s and 70s. I mean, the dude was a badass. 